On this week's show, X-Men Seminal Moments, Stranger Things 6, and there's a new catalog in stores. Check it out. It's Previews World Weekly, and it's happening right now. What's up, Previews World? It's Wednesday, it's New Comic Book Day, which means it's time for Previews World Weekly. I am one of your hosts, Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and as usual, we're here every week to remind you guys to stop at a comic shop and get involved in what's happening in the world of comics. And if you're enjoying what's happening here, be sure to like and subscribe to make sure that you keep the nerd news coming. Absolutely. And also, we're here to remind you that there's a new catalog out this Ta week. Ta-da! <laughs> um, as it is every month, the previous catalog is released, and there's tons of stuff you can pre-order. Mm -hmm. On the cover this month, actually, actually some pretty two pretty cool covers, actually. Absolutely. And I actually really like the Wildcats one. Oh, uh, yeah. But I also like the Berserker one. And these are two really well-known artists. This is Jim Cheung and uh, uh, Mike Diodato Jr. Uh, two new series coming out. The Wildcats one in particular, I gotta say, I just was binging Wildstorm. We had a three-day weekend this week, and I was binging Wildstorm, which is like the prelude to Wildcats. Yes. A lot of fun, so you should definitely check that out. Cool, cool. Um, also, so yeah, well, first of all, make sure you get your pre-orders ready. That is very important. That is part of the process for the previews catalog every month. Skim through it. You can also look at it online at previewsworld.com slash catalog, right. and let your local comic shop know, hey, I want this. I want to pick this up. This looks cool to me. So. Nice. Um, and on that note, we got no real like big movie news this week, right? Yeah. Nothing, no TV. This is usually where we talk about this yeah. stuff, but nothing really happened this week. John Wick came out. John Wick came we out. We both Actually, saw it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, what did you think of John Wick? We I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah? Uh -huh. I did. Um, I came to the conclusion that I actually haven't watched the first one. Oh, really? You figured that out <laughs> as I, you were watching it? <laughs> I don't know why that like escaped me, but I did see the second one. Okay. Right. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Which was fun, uh -huh. but I really, really enjoyed this one. Okay, cool. For cool. sure. I kind of expected Halle Berry's role to be kind of like we're. Gonna, I mean, we're not. Gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it. It's mm -hmm. not. You can't really spoil John Wick anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. But like, uh, I was. I was expecting Halle Berry's role to be kind of like. Meh. But actually, she was actually really good yeah. in the movie. Yeah, like, I enjoyed it. Like, I yeah, I was actually surprised. I, and I like that the moral of John Wick is still don't screw with somebody's dog. Yeah, legit. <laughs> like, I mean, it really is. Also, the raid guys. We were talking about the raid a few weeks ago. The raid guys showed up. You need to watch the raid. Yeah. Because like that was just a sampling of what they can do, and they get really into a, a really good fight scene. But those two dudes, like both of them, uh -huh, are just like uh -huh. insane. So a lot of, I mean, all the fight scenes are pretty yeah. darn good. Mm -hmm, a right. few, there were like a couple that I was like, okay, we get right, it. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. but still, yeah. great choreography, great, great fighting. Right, like, right. Mm -hmm. And I'm typically kind of iffy about the gun foo stuff. Like mm -hmm. that's what they call a gun foo. Like you know, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but like uh, they've upped the ante each movie to get away from it and yeah. like kind of diversify the action a little bit more, which is right up my alley. Like yes. I need the car chases. Great. I need the horse chases. The horse chases, right? yeah, that cracked me up. We were like, ah, we see where this is going. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. So, yeah, yeah check out John Wick if you haven't Absolutely. had a chance. Actually, we ran a contest, and I still need to choose a winner um, for the John Wick uh, hardcover from Dynamite. Ah. So keep an eye out for that, because if you participated, there's a good chance, uh, you know, you might be one of the winners. There's a good chance. Actually, it's probably not that good of a chance. If, I don't know what the odds are on those numbers. So. <laughs> Dang it. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Anyway, uh, Enemy is here, and it's time to show us what's at comic shops. So check out what's hitting new release shelves today. What's up, Previews World? Anamia here, and I'm going to give you a look at some of the new titles in stores this week. Here's what's at comic shops for the week of May 29th, 2019. Is that it? No way. Your comic shop has something for every type of customer. So stop at a comic shop today, and I'll see you back here next week. And that's just a little bit of what's available at your local comic shop today. You can find a full list of everything available. Head on over to previewsworld.com slash new releases, or you can just go to a comic shop and browse. I mean, that's okay. always fun too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking forward to this week? <laughs> Hellboy versus Lobster Johnson, one, yeah. the Ring of Death. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> So, uh, of course, this is Mike Mignola and Chris Robertson, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got 
Hellboy showdown with Lobster Johnson, which is like one of the best characters. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. His name is Lobster Johnson. Right, yeah. Uh, Hellboy's got some misadventures in Mexico, and mm. he's got this ill-fated turn as foe to Lobster Johnson, and uh, it's for a luchador movie. Nice. That's <laughs> nice. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So they're doing that, and then uh, we've got Paul Grist returning to draw The Visitor. Nice. Who's lurking in the background, okay. debating whether or not he made the right decision to spare Hellboy ah, okay. in their last nice, encounter? Nice. So, yeah, you haven't. You, did you see the Hellboy movie? I didn't. You didn't. Actually, I'm that's like afraid of it. Strongly reminiscent of actually a sequence in the movie. So oh, that's how funny! Pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, I, like yeah, as you were saying, I was like, oh wait, Luchador's around. Huh. Okay, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, no, like that's a fun one, and like I love the uh, the title of it is the title of it is promising too much, <laughs> but it's great because that's kind so of like ready. the pulp vibe. Yeah, exactly. For, right? Yeah. Um, this week, I am personally looking forward to Grand Abyss Hotel. Cool. Um, this is something that came out of left field. Um, it is Dave Rubin, who is actually, he's a really good artist. Like, he's one of my favorites. And he's typically has popped up just randomly in other books I've read. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm glad to see that there's a full title that he like he's, like, doing entirely. Yeah. Um, he's done stuff like Battling Boy. I don't know if anybody, if you're familiar with it or anybody else is familiar with it. It's a cool, like, uh, action-adventure type thing that cool. uh, was released by uh, First Second. Uh, but basically, it's a political satire. Mm-hmm. Um, it basically, the concept is it takes place in a dystopia where neoliberalism is a religion, fake news it runs rampant, big, big business controls everything. So, not that far removed from our own reality. A little too real. Uh, but yeah, like uh, Ruben did the ether, he's done Battling Boy. Um, and like, it's, it's, his style is just high energy, like just really kinetic, like just like kind of anime inspired. I'm um, actually one of my other choices this week is going to be kind of something in the same vein. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, yeah, just. Super relevant. Seems like a cool title. Like, I'm always cool down for dystopian futures. Right. Like, I know that's your thing, but that's also my thing. I can do that, <laughs> too. What else are you looking forward to? Uh, we have the God of War trade paperback coming out today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, this is sort of a, it's like between games. Oh, okay. So it's before, li- well, at least it looks mm-hmm. from the plot to be a prequel to the most recent. Is it the one with the sun? Yes. Okay. Right. Well, they don't mention the sun in here, which is why I'm saying that it's probably before oh, okay. you really get into this, this stuff with his kid. Okay. Because right, right. it's uh, basically Kratos has just finished the war on Olympus. He's building a new life for himself mm-hmm. in the remote Norse wilds. <laughs> and, of course, he's got to get into trouble. Of course. As he does. As he does. Because there's no rest for the wicked, right? He's the god of war. <laughs> he's like. the god of war. <laughs> he's trying to not be, right. but it doesn't work. It's in your name, bud. that's who he is. <laughs> so, you know, he's trying to chill out, but he, of course, inadvertently, in, inadvertently sparks a feud with a mysterious cult of berserkers after he tries to help a stranger that's being mauled by a bear. <laughs> so he's trying to be good. He's trying to, He's yeah. trying to be a very nice Give person. But it doesn't help. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Still gets embroiled in a little madness. Yeah. And uh, this is actually also from Chris Robertson. Oh, okay, nice. So, yeah. Oh, cool. All mm-hmm, right, awesome. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And so this will, this collects um, issues zero through four of the God of War comics. Okay, nice, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, also out this week, another one I'm looking forward to is Grunt, The Art of James Stucco. I've recommended his Alien Dead Orbit quite a few times, mm-hmm. I think, when the individual issues are coming out, but also when the trade came out. Like... You just you just look at the book, like you know what I mean. Like it's just yeah. like it's so well done. It's yeah. somewhere between like I want to say Jeff Darrow, and H. R. Geiger, and probably Katsuhiro Otomo, the Akira guy. Like I cool. mean, like it's just that super detailed, just super crazy. Also, again, I mentioned like Dave Rubin, like uh, David Rubin. Like it's super kinetic, very high energy, and. It's an art book. It's like, you know, it's just like just stuff straight from his it's like studio, beautiful. you know, like and it's just there's some artists that are on a short list of artists that I'm like, I want to see their process. Yeah. He's one of them. So cool. definitely check out Grunt. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, outside of our picks, what else is available? We also week? have Stranger Things 6, number one. Uh-huh. So <laughs> that confused me for a second right, at yeah. first. <laughs> like Stranger Things 6, one? No, uh-huh. 6. Stranger Things 6, title. Issue number one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, this is from Jody Hauser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And this is basically what happened before the show. So before right, Stranger yeah. Things, as we know it, as the Netflix entity, mm-hmm. this is talking about um, a teenage girl with precognitive abilities. Mm-hmm. And she struggled through a lifetime of exploitation, only to end up as a pawn of the government, and then... Uh, you know, they're trying to harness her powers to right. their own ends. As the evil government guys do. <laughs> as, as evil governments are wont to do right, in yeah. many cases. <laughs> but yeah, so it's cool because it's the, the sort of odd stuff that 
kicked off the strangeness of Stranger Things. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. All right, nice little prequel, right? And yeah. Jody Hauser, who also does the Stranger Things regular comic. So, yep. you know, yeah, <laughs> she's all in. I love it. Yes. Um, also out this week, uh, Doomsday Clock number 10. Yeah. I know people were ragging on the lateness of this one. It's yeah. been, I mean, I think, God, I, like I want to say when we started doing the show, it was probably somewhere around issue four. So, I think so yeah. we've been doing this for like about 30 something episodes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but for those of you who've been waiting and complaining, issue number 10 is out. I don't know when issue number 11 will come out, but, uh -huh. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it's Gary Frank, it's Jeff Johns, like, you know, these two are super talented, great, like, great artist writer team. Yeah. And um, if you've, I, I'm, I'm trade waiting. I'll openly admit I'm trade waiting on this one. Me too. But, yeah. <laughs> but like, it uh, looks great though. Right. I read the prequel, The Button, which is not, uh, which was kind of like, well, definitely leading into it. It wasn't Gary Frank and Jeff Johns, but right. really interesting. And the idea of these characters coming into the DC universe is just a, a threat level that I am like waiting to see, like, just yeah. kind of like, explode. Yes. So, yeah. I'm yeah. kind of excited for it, too. Watchmen DC, like, you know, check it out. That's uh, Doomsday Clock number 10 mm -hmm. in stores today. Oh, yes. Um, and on that note, it's time for the news. Yes. So, Thea's going to take over, and she's going to talk about some of the cool stuff that's been going on in the last couple of days. Check it out. Since 2007, creator Adam Warren has brought the adventures of Empowered and the Super Homies to life. And their super story continues in September with Empowered Volume 11, the long-awaited full-volume conclusion to the story begun in Empowered Volume 10, featuring non-stop, cover-to-cover caped combat. Empowered is back and in distress. She finds herself the target of a maniacal new supervillain who uses his godlike powers to turn the entire city of superhumans against her. Outnumbered and under siege, aided by only the ghost of a slain hero, can Empowered survive the onslaught long enough to free her enslaved teammates and loved ones? Or is this the end of her and the rest of the Super Homies for good? The 216-page Empowered Volume 11 arrives in comic shops September 18th. Nice. Super cool! Right, right. I, just, uh, I love <laughs> Super Homies. <laughs> yeah, the Super Homies. And it's like difficult for it to come out of my mouth, but it's Supra Humans. Supra Humans, Not right. Super. Not Super. Supra. supra. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, Empowered's one of those books has been recommended to me over and over again. Like, mm -hmm. it's a kind of a manga satire in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, it looks like it. Like, she gets powers and she loses her clothes or something like that. But, like, you know. <laughs> but, actually, a lot of women like it. Actually, most, mostly women well, have suggested it to me. Hey, hey. <laughs> Ladies. Which I don't know what, says, what that says about me. But, <laughs> like, uh, hmm. yeah, that like is you'll like this. <laughs> yeah. You'll enjoy that. Oh. Sure. Okay. All right. But uh, yeah, it does seem cool, and I like the artwork. No, the artwork's right. It's Adam Warren, like yeah, he used to do Gen Thirteen back in the day, and I used to love when he did that yeah. series too. So yeah, That's it's really just, beautiful. Just a fun title. And she looks like a fun character yeah. just from the cover too. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I see you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Initially announced at the Diamond Retailer Summit in Las Vegas a couple weekends ago, Isad Rabik will return to Marvel to write and draw a Conan the Barbarian one shot titled Conan the Barbarian Exodus Number One. The one-shot will tell the never-before-told story of Conan's first journey from Samaria. Braving the elements without food, shelter, or weapons, Conan must learn to survive even as nature itself conspires to stop him. But if he can reach civilization, will his wounds heal or will his troubles just begin? Conan the Barbarian Exodus No. 1 will be available in comic shops this August. Yeah, uh, yeah I'd like, well, first of all, say his name again. Isad Rabik. Rabik. All right. I've been saying Rabik since like the early 2000s. Who knows? So. <laughs> well, Isad <just>, knows. <laughs> I hope so. But the rest of us don't because we're stupid Americans. Yeah, well, you know, it happens. We try. We try. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm actually kind of very curious about this because if anybody has a style that uh, any modern comic writer, I'm sorry, comic artist has like a style that lends itself to Conan, it's this guy. Mm -hmm. Like this is kind of something. I'm like when Marvel got Conan, yeah. like I'm assuming they were like, we should talk to him for a little bit and see what he wants to do with it. It looks real cool. <laughs> it does. I don't yeah. like. He wrote. I don't know if he. I think he co-wrote a book called Verses last year, which mm -hmm. is one of the books I suggested. Um, but his art style, just like fully painted, just you know, like gorgeous. In in the vein of Frazetta, for the most part, I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, you just can't beat it. I'm very curious. Even if the even if his writing is awful, I'll probably just buy it just for the art. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> no disrespect to Rubik. So. <laughs> IDW Publishing reunites the D&D Legends of Baldur's Gate creative team of writer Jim Zub and artist Max Dunbar for an all-new adventure, Dungeons & Dragons Infernal Tides. Debuting this coming November, the five-issue miniseries delves into the mythology established in the highly anticipated D&D adventure Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus on September 17th. 
Infernal Tides, while an accommodating entry point for intrepid new readers, rewards longtime fans as the continuation of Jim Zub's epic comic book storyline, which began with Dungeons and Dragons Legends of Baldur's Gate and continued into Shadows of the Vampire, Frost Giant's Fury, and Evil at Baldur's Gate. Apparently, Jim will be shaving his head and donning the purple makeup and leather armor to play as Minsk at D&D Live 2019, <laughs> The Descent. With Chris Perkins as DM and Matthew Mercer playing Boo in the final part of The Descent, you can check it out on DungeonsAndDragons.com on May 18th at 8 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I know nothing about D&D. Our production yeah. manager keeps threatening to teach me how to play it. It's fine. I feel like I should maybe spend like... I don't know. I say two hours, but it always seems like it's going to be longer with this. Of course it's going to be longer. <laughs> it's D&D. You can't just do two hours. Right, yeah. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Like, I, I feel it's like fun. I should learn how to play it. It's not difficult. Right, yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm awful. so impatient when it comes to stuff like that. Like, I get fidgety. I tried to play Magic the Gathering. Oh. I know that's not the same thing. No, not remotely. But, like, um, yeah, I tried to play Magic one time. Tabletop stuff is not your gig. Yeah. It's just like... Fair enough. Eh, I get I get squirrely out My friends and I had a and d group going for a while. Yeah. And... For me, it was more about hanging out with my friends, honestly. Right. Like, yeah. the role play aspect and stuff was sort of fun, but mm -hmm. it's not my top tiered favorite thing to yeah. do. Uh -huh. But it's entertaining. Right, right, right. So. I mean, the community aspect. I've, I've watched a lot of documentaries about D&D. &D. There you go. <laughs> and, like, the community aspect I always found, I yeah, found fascinating exactly. about it. Like, so I get that. Like, yeah. you know, hang out with your friends and play a tabletop game. Uh -huh. Like, you know, I get it. But I love this, that, that like, Jim's really diving into the yeah, character 100%, here. Yeah, 100%, yeah. No, he's a real one. <laughs> he's totally into it. Oh, yeah, and of course, Matt Mercer, right? Yeah, right, right. Good stuff. Friend Good of the show, stuff. actually. Yes. <laughs> DC fans can expect an exciting future as the publisher revealed early details on its strategy for 2020, beginning with stories featuring tight, intertwined narratives across DC's comic book lineup. Leading this charge into the future is Batman, the world's greatest detective and a cornerstone of the DC universe. DC's ongoing Batman comic book, currently shipping twice monthly, will return to a monthly schedule beginning this coming January, allowing DC to incorporate the monthly Batman title into the larger DC universe and continuity. This will ship alongside a new 12-issue Batman Catwoman series by Tom King and Clay Mann, while Bat Family titles, Detective Comics, Catwoman, Nightwing, Batgirl, and others will continue into 2020 with no immediate changes to their shipping schedules. So. Very cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, there was a lot of speculation. Last week it was it was revealed that Tom King was getting well, people thought that he would got fired right, from yeah. Batman. Right? No, yeah, he's just scooting over. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> he's just making room for probably another creator, I would imagine, but also so this character can he like his run was very much tied to like he had an arc and he was gonna tell it and like I guess this allows some wiggle room for like another for Batman to get pulled back into the larger DC universe yes. for maybe probably something something coming down the line that we don't even know mm -hmm, about. So mm -hmm. So yeah, you guys can put the speculation to rest. Some people, were, I think, were dancing in the aisle because they thought he was leaving the book, and I'm like, I oh, don't, I don't think that's what's going on no, here. So he's yeah. just scooting over and doing something else. Doing he's something doing else. the Batwoman, Catwoman stuff. Right, yeah. And Batwoman, also, excuse me, Batman. Batwoman. Then you just shipped him. That's all. <laughs> I mean, Batwoman, Catwoman works too. They works. Too. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but yeah. But it's not it's Batman. Yeah, right. Batman, Catwoman. Batwoman, Catwoman. Batman, nope. Catwoman. No, never mind. <laughs> Anyway. We can't do this. What else do we have in the news? <laughs> ah, mm. <laughs> Finally, we have a little bit of somber news. Justin Ponzer, the acclaimed colorist who has worked on various Marvel titles, including Ultimate Spider-Man, Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and many more, has died after a lengthy battle with cancer. He was 42. A statement announcing his passing was posted on his Facebook page. After a long and well-documented battle with cancer, Justin passed away in his ho home early on the morning of May 18th, surrounded by loved ones. It's been a time of mourning, reminiscing, and above all else, celebration. Because, come on, this guy. Mm -hmm. yeah, In the meanwhile, any stories or images of how he's upgraded your life are welcome. Mm. Marvel also released a statement praising him and his work, and other members of the comic book industry, including his former creative partner, Brian Michael Bendis, and Marvel editor-in-chief, C.B. Cebulski, took to social media to remember him. Nice. nice there are a lot of really good things that a lot of people said. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you know, it's, it's so easy to not have a name and a face, name to a face, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to comic creators. Sure. And so, like, you know, it's unfortunate that he had to pass away for me personally to, to see who this guy is, yeah. but, like, I've seen his name in so many titles of for course. like so long yeah. so you know i just think it's important like you know not only just giving credit but you know also understanding like there are people behind these comics yes. and they make them and yes. like you know it's you know it's unfortunate he passed away but he's got a he's got a he's got a a, a, hit, a long line of titles like yeah. under his belt so Absolutely. Yeah, yeah yeah he won't be forgotten he won't be forgotten mm -hmm. 
So on that note, uh, we're going to move on to yeah. previous toy chests. Yep, yep. A um, little bit more, try to perk you guys up a little bit. Uh, the, uh, sorry, Natasha's here, <laughs> and she's going to show you some of the stuff that's available in comic shops right now. Hey, Previews World, Natasha here, and I'm going to give you a look at some of the new toys and collectibles in stores today. Here's your previous toy chest for the week of May 29th, 2019. Want to see more? Be sure to check out Talking Toys, our weekly show that spotlights new collectibles on the way to your friendly local comic shop. Just head over to previousworld.com slash talking toys to find out more. Thanks, Natasha. And of course, that's just a little bit of what we've got in terms of toys as well. So if you want to see a full round rundown of what's available, head on over to previewsworld.com slash toy chest and you can see a full list of all the stuff that you can collect. Mm -hmm. That Charmander is adorable. The Charmander. I need to brush up on my Pokemon. I don't know anything about Pokemon. He's one of the original starters. Like I mean, I've heard of his name before. <laughs> Give me your nerd card. I love the yeah, I like the I love the nerd face of judgment. <laughs> I do not know at least the first three starters from a hundred years ago. I like you know I don't I never played but Pokemon was like right after I was like kind of like I'm trying to be cool now. I like girls. <laughs> Well, I like Pokemon. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you can Whatever. do both, I guess, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the time, I was in high school, you know. Yeah. Pokemon's for little kids. <laughs> right. As yeah, I, I watch, like As I watch X-Men, the cartoon. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> take the nerd out of the comic shop. Can't take the comic shop out of the nerd. That's true. Oh, well, we tried. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, actually, so there's the Red Death PVC statue. Yes. Which actually looks really cool. It's definitely cool. And, like, I actually have not read Dark Knights. Sorry, but that Neither design is like amazing. Like it I is. think that's the coolest thing I've seen in a while. Yeah, yeah. it's super detailed, super pretty. And right, we're and giving it away. We're giving it away. <gasps> we don't have one in the studio. No, we don't. But if you guys want to win that super cool Dark Knights Metal Red Death PVC, and that's from Diamond Select Toys. Yes, it is. Let us know what two DC characters you'd like to see in a mashup. Comment on Facebook or YouTube wherever you're doing that, and we can pick you. Next Wednesday? Next Wednesday. There you go. We'll take entries until next week. Yeah. And you could win that really cool figure. Yeah, yeah, there you boop, go. Boop, boop. No, it's actually really neat. That's super cool. And um, of course, we have the winner yeah. from last week, mm -hmm. right? So last week's winner is BN Chile, <laughs> or Chile, I'm Chile, not sure. Right. B N C H I L E. <laughs> <laughs> who said, my favorite thing is the fact that we can talk about all things comic and geek culture and not notice the time fly by. Oh, and the comics rock too. Mm. I love nostalgia collectibles in Eugene, Oregon. Nice, nice. And like, yeah, the, the, I guess the question was last week, name, just tell us something about your comic shop yes, that you love. that's one of your so, favorite things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's pretty universal. So I was like, that was a good one. I love that. Yeah. Like, yeah, people, Conversations for days. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about community earlier. Like comic yeah. shops, I always say it's comic important. shops are community centers. Like that's really what they're for. Very true. Um, and actually, I want to point out, he's winning the bundle we got from the from the Las Vegas Retailer Summit. But including that bundle is those what, two really cool, like, original art pieces by yeah. John Romita Jr. and Lee Bermejo. So, Super cool. Super cool. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I should say, not original art pieces. They're no. reprints. Yes, they're prints, but, but still. still very cool. They're very cool. Um, and speaking of creators, and uh, we have a trailer. And this week is actually something a little bit different, because normally we do a comic trailer. Mm -hmm. But this trailer is actually about creators reacting to a comic. Mm -hmm. It's the X-Men seminal moments. And then when we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about it so you can understand exactly what it is. Check it out. Jim Lee was a huge influence on everybody, he still is. His version of Wolverine, you know, this particular drawing was something that is embedded in every mutant fan's mind. 
including my own. That number one comic with all the fold outs. I think there was gate folds with all the characters, you know, covers that fit together. That was the biggest event I remember at that time. And Jim knocked it out of the park with excellent, memorable representations of all the X-Men characters. You can't get at a higher level than the creative team that was part of that. And the story was great. I mean, Chris Claremont, who's not gonna pay attention to that? I think generations upon generations of new artists and writers coming up look at that as one of the groundbreaking issues. The craft of comic books, the stories have just gotten better and better. That was just one of the X-Men seminal moments that Marvel's doing on their YouTube page, so definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. It's part of a series, and like each creator, each creator talks about a, a, a particular era or a period in the X-Men run that like really affected them, really kind of like drew, drew them into the X-Men line. Cool. And then on top of that, like other creators that were actually involved with that get to chime in. Nice. So it's actually pretty neat. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I think that like in general, it's always nice to kind of get that that thing that like, you know, that, that conversation about what got you into this. Right. Like geek culture or comic specifically mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so like, and also it's part of a lead up to Power of, Power of X and House of X, mm -hmm. which Marvel's releasing, featuring Jonathan Hickman and uh, a bunch of other creators. Yeah. Like it's gonna be the big, the, the next, what they're promising to be the next big moment for the X-Men. So we'll see how that works. Really but yeah, it's got Ed Brubaker Baker and Chris Claremont and Al Ewing and like, you know, so it's, it's a really big, comprehensive yeah. like lineup of creators who just are talking about their favorite X-Men run. Yeah. Um, and also, <laughs> I want to ask you a question. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, give me at least one X-Men moment that like really stood out for you. Just like in the world of X-Men? Just the world of X-Men. It doesn't have to be comics. It can be anything. Because there's been a lot of different X-Men stuff out there. Have you tried not being a mutant? <laughs> That's a good just one. Just such a good line. That's a good line, right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's X2. And like, on top of that, it's actually probably my favorite X movie. I know a lot of people like First Class, but I really like X2, because yeah. I think it encompasses everything. I, I, honestly, I enjoy all of the movies. Oh, really? And I'm That's probably one of the risky. only people on the planet that does. <laughs> I know that like they're, I, well, I, I take them with a grain of salt as they are right, yeah. away from all the other X-Men stuff. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that they're visually cool. The plot's not that great, honestly, mm -hmm. in my opinion, but um, still enjoyable to a certain extent right, yeah, if you yeah. separate it right, right, right. from what you know and love about the X-Men. Yeah. Right, that's, fair, that's fair. I, I mean, you're a little bit nicer than I am. I hate most of the X-Men movies. Most people do. That's okay. <laughs> but X2 is a really good one. First Class has its moments. I love First so, Class. So, yeah, I, like, I can't knock those two too hard. Yeah. And I'm sure if I tried, I could probably find something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, X-Men's like, it's an institution. And yeah, like, it is. And I saw someone earlier, like, uh, online saying that, like, you know, X-Men fans are the most passionate fans. Like, because, You're like, their continuity is so intertwined that, like, you really have to be invested into them. Have a conversation with Natasha, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, I actually would love to hear Talk Natasha's. about hardcore fans, yeah. Yeah, I would love to hear she Natasha's, like, you know, favorite X-Men moments. So. Oh, man. She's probably got some good ones. She's probably got some good ones. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, definitely check that out. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, it's on Marvel's YouTube channel, and, like, it's going to be part of a series. And, like, that's just a trailer for the series, because I think the full video, and I think the first one's for Giant Size X-Men number one, cool. is about 30 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah, awesome. just fun, cool stuff. Thank and, you. Yeah, so check that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and speaking of seminal moments, or just like in general, just moments that kind of like pulled you into the culture of comics. Absolutely. We talked to a few retailers um, at the Las Vegas Summit, and we asked them, what got you into comics? And it just so happens that like a handful of them gave us some really cool answers. Mm -hmm. And it's not like all what you think. I, that, that was a cool thing about this, is like each retailer had like a different a, had a different entry point. Nice. Which means, which proves to me that, like, you know, we talk a lot about, like, you know, how do you get, how do you get more people in the comics? How do you get more people in the comics? Mm -hmm. That's what everybody talks about. Sure. There's no one way. No. And so you kind of have to try a little bit of everything. Absolutely. So check this out. This is from the Las Vegas Retailer Summit, and these are some of the uh, retailers and local comic shops that, like, just wanted to share their experience and how they got into the world of comics. Mm -hmm. I read comics a little bit when I was a kid, uh, but actually, when I got back from college, from my freshman year, my best friend from the before college uh, had really gotten into comics so he had a big stack of them so I read them that whole summer I just read all his X-Men uh, which was a Cl Chris Claremont run and I loved it so much I just got into it I started reading the back issues of that and I ended up reading the whole Chris Claremont run and just got into it from there. So my dad collected as a kid so I've been reading comics since I first learned to read. I think the first thing that got me hooked is the, I'm named after a D-list X-Men character Sienna Blaze 
from the 90s. So I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So when I was a kid, I read a ton of X-Men, and then I read reprints of uh, Stanley and Ditko's Amazing Spider-Man. And then I just started reading a ton. I didn't have a store near me, so I just read my dad's collection, and then I started reading any graphic novel my library had. Um, so I've been reading comics ever since, and then I, when I went to college, I found a shop and started Pull List. So the first comic I actually ever read was Spawn number 10, um, and it was because a friend of mine was like, you have to read this comic. And that's exactly how it started from there. Um, it's been a process learning everything that I've been able to learn, and I love learning new things and seeing the new comics that are coming out for sure. Uh, no lie, I had some good friends who had some ratty old uh, Spire edition Archies and one copy of uh, Tom Landry's Dallas Cowboys. And we read those about 20,000 times. Uh, it was my first exposure to comic books when I was young. And then never again, I didn't see another comic book until I was in graduate school. We have more coming, of course. Like we interviewed a lot of people at the Las Vegas Summit, and mm -hmm. some of them, like Mark Way, we interviewed Steve Aoki, and we actually asked them the same question. Cool. So, like again, like just giving them like a, a nice range of like you know, first interactions with the world of comics, That's and neat. none of them are the same. Some people got in through TV and movies. Some sure. people just like you know happened into a Seven Eleven one day, and were like you know, <laughs> oh wow, up, what yeah. is this? So, That's and awesome. yeah, I think I, in general, I'm going to try to keep asking you know, creators and retailers when I encounter them and we have a camera, of course, sure. like how that happened. So like, how did they get in the comics? It's a cool thing to learn about yeah. them. It's always a fun one, origin yeah. stories. We always talk about exactly. origin stories. Exactly, so. yeah. <laughs> but we're almost done, so yes. what do we got this week? We got the comic shop shout out. Yeah. So if you guys want your local comic shop featured on the show, hit us up on social media wherever you can find us. Use the hashtag support your LCS and we could feature you on the show. This week we have Krypton Comics in Nebraska, mm -hmm. and that was sent in by Kathleen Clyde. Thanks for that. So we'll leave you guys with some images of that at the end of the show, and that's it. That's it, guys. Um, this has been Previews World Weekly. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and we'll see you at the Spinner Rack. <laughs>